This is Joseph Trust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I fix a model created in 4R7 that is displaying incorrect materials in 4R8? So as an example here, I just have ZBrush 4R7 loaded up, and I just have a dog model here loaded in. Now with this dog model here, I made sure I had the material channel active. I then went over to the material palette here and picked a material, and then just clicked and dragged to assign that material to my model. So with the dog here, I've broken this dog up into four materials. Now at any time inside of ZBrush, you can also see what materials you have currently applied to the mesh by coming over to the material picker over here and clicking and dragging, and this is going to give you a pick option. Now with this pick option, I can hover over parts of my model that contain a different material, and then when I release, it will now select that material. So this is handy if you need to find out what materials you currently have applied to your model. So let's say I have my dog model here all set up and I have these materials applied. And now I wanna open this model inside of ZBrush 4R8. So I'm gonna just save this model out and I'm gonna save it in two ways. The first way I'm gonna save it is just using the tool palette over here and using save as. Now when I save the dog model out this way, it's going to generate a ZTL file or a ZBrush tool file. So I'm gonna come over here and click Save As. And I'm just gonna save this file out as dog materials. So dogmaterials.ztl and click Save. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save out a ZBrush project file. So to do this, I go to the File menu up here and open this up. And in here, there is a Save As as well. And when you use this method, it's going to save a ZPR file or a ZBrush project file. So I'm just come up here and click Save As and go to that folder as well. And I'm just gonna save this as dog materials underscore ZPR. And I'm just gonna click save. And so now I've just saved my dog model out here that I've applied these materials to. So now I'm gonna open up ZBrush 4R8. So now I have ZBrush 4R8 here launched and I just wanna load in that dog file here. So I'm gonna go back to the tool palette over here. And first I'm gonna load in the ZTL file. So I'm gonna click the load tool option here. And now I'm gonna select that dog materials ZTL file that I created and just click open. The dog should now appear in the tool palette over here and I'm just gonna click and drag on my canvas to draw them out like so. And then I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard or go into edit mode and then rotate to the side. So you'll notice that the dog here inside of ZBrush 4R8 looks a little bit different than it did in ZBrush 4R7. So you can see the red wax material here is still correct, but the material here, here, and here have changed. So they're not those same materials I had in ZBrush 4R7. So first of all, why is this happening? And second of all, how can I fix this? So when you have a material applied to the poly paint of your model, ZBrush is using a number to reference the current loaded materials. So if I open up my material palette over here, you can see that the materials in here are a little bit different than they are in ZBrush 4R7. So some of the ZBrush core materials were added as default materials inside of ZBrush 4R8. Now with the addition of these materials, the order of your materials here have changed from ZBrush 4R7 to 4R8. So inside of ZBrush, each of these materials is basically given a number value. So matte cap red wax, as an example, would be number one, chalk would be two, Chrome A would be three, Chrome B would be four, and it would just continue down the list like so. So the MacCab Red Wax, which was number one here, is also number one in ZBrush 4R7. So this is why the material on the dog's backside here stayed consistent. So this model was referencing material number one, and MacCab Red Wax is in the number one slot. Now you'll notice that the dog's head is not referencing that MacCab gray material anymore. So to find out what material this is, I can just hover over the material picker here and click and drag and select the head there. And you'll see it's selected the green metallic material. So if I open up material palette here, you can see the green metallic falls in this slot here. Now this slot is slot number 10. And inside of ZBrush 4R7, the material that was in slot number 10 was matte cap gray. Inside of ZBrush 4R8, the material that is in slot number 10 is green metallic. So the number value has stayed consistent, but the materials have shifted. And so now matte cap gray is number 13 instead of number 10. So this is now creating a disconnect you're seeing from a model that was exported out as a ZTL file that had materials baked in. Now there are two quick ways you can resolve this issue. 
The first way is that you can copy and paste materials inside a ZBrush to change where their order is among the slots. So if I have green metallic here, I can come over and select matte cap gray, copy this material, and then paste it into the green metallic slot. And then now the dog's head will display matte cap gray. So the process to do this would be first to just select the material you want to copy. So I'm gonna select matte cap gray here. And then I'm gonna go to the material palette up at the top here and open this up. And I'm gonna click the copy matte button. So it's gonna take the material I currently have selected and it's just going to copy it to memory. So now I've taken that matte cap gray and I have now copied it. Now I can go back to my material picker again. I can select the green metallic material, which is in that slot number 10. And I can go back to material palette up here and now I can click Paste Material. Now when you click Paste Material, it's gonna take the material that's currently in that slot, and it's gonna override the material in that slot with the one I just copied. So I copied matte cap gray to memory, and I'm gonna paste matte cap gray into that green metallic slot. And you'll notice as it's pasted into that slot, that slot number 10 is now referencing matte cap gray, and that material is now displaying correctly on the dog here. Now I can do the same thing with this material here. So I can come over here and click and drag to select that material. And you'll see the material now is set to poly skin. So I can open this up. And the material that it was inside of ZBrush 4R7 was silver foil. So you can see here is where poly skin is in 4R8. And then here is where silver is in 4R8. So I just need to select silver foil, go back to the material palette up at the top, copy that material. Go back in here, select the poly skin material, go back to material again and click paste material. And now that material will be updated. So you may be thinking of this process may take a little while to go through and copy and paste materials all throughout your entire tool just to get your mesh from ZBrush 4R7 to look correct in ZBrush 4R8. So there is a simpler way. So when we were in 4R7, we saved out two files. We saved out the ZTL file from the tool palette over here and we also saved out a project file from the file menu here. Now, ZTL files are not going to store any materials with it. So it's only gonna take your mesh and it's only going to contain those number values that are referencing the order of the loaded materials. But if you save a ZPR file or a ZBrush project file, this is going to remember the materials and also the number order. So as an example of this, let's load in the ZPR file version of the dog that I saved out of ZBrush 4R7. So I'm gonna go up to the file palette up here and open this up. I'm gonna click open here. And now I'm gonna go back to my directory and I'm gonna select the dog materials underscore ZPR file. And now I'm gonna click open. Now you'll notice when this file loads in that it looks correct right out the gate. So the dog's loaded in and it looks identical to what I had in ZBrush 4R7. So to summarize, if you're using models that have materials baked into the polypane information of their surfaces, it is highly recommended to save out a ZPR or project file instead of a ZTL or tool file. And this just makes sure that any custom materials you may have applied to a mesh, or if you're bringing a mesh in from ZBrush 4R7 to 4R8, that the number values that are being stored in the surface of your model reference the correct materials. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.